Hi everybody, Kirk here from Rampart Gear. Today I wanted to show you something a little bit different than my normal knife reviews. I wanted to show you the AR-15 that I ran in a class that I took in August from Darcy, Direct Action Resource Center. Uh, can I show you the configuration of the rifle, the way I like it, uh, the rifle the way it's configured, and uh, give you my explanation why I run the rifle the way I do. This is just a standard semi-automatic AR-15, 16 inch, lightweight um, as far as the barrel. It's a carbine leaf gas system. Uh, it's a 1 in 9 twist. The only reason why it's a 1 in 9 twist is a, a while back, a good while back, I got the barrel at a good good price, and I thought I would give it a try. I know a lot of people are, are saying, you know, 1 in 7, 1 in 7. But this is what I had, and this is what I typically, or primarily shoot 55 grain and 62 grain, but mainly more 55 grain than anything. So I wanted to just kind of show you uh, the way that my rifle set up. What I'm running on, on the rifle itself is a Troy. TRX Extreme Rail. Now this is one of the early versions where it just uses two screws instead of like the new Alpha version which actually has three screws which go all the way around uh, the, the actual the rail itself. Um, this rail is 13.2 I believe it is or either 13.5 as far as the, its length. It's really really very very easy to install and let me just keep going on. This is uh, just a semi lower receiver that I'm running here. Uh, standard flat top uh, AR-15 upper the backup sights are PRI rear backups, as well as the fronts are PRI front flips, and then again, like I said, PRI rear flips. I used to run a PRI big latch. After the BCM came out with this uh, gunfighter charging handle, I love this. Now this is a Mod 3, I believe this is the largest one that they make. Some people like the one that's a little bit smaller, but I prefer this one. Um, it's just really easy to get a hold of, and because I'm a right-handed shooter, it's really easy for me to use this, this charging handle. I'm running an Aimpoint Micro T1. This is a 4 MOA dot in a LaRue mount. This has been, bar none, I would say one of my favorite sites. I've owned everything, EOTEX, uh, Aimpoint Comp M2s, Comp Ms, Comp M4s, and bar none, this has been my favorite site. I'm running a, a mil-spec tube. I'm running a Magpul CTR stock here. Um, and as far as moving back towards the front, Again, this is the PRI front flip, and I'm running a Streamlight TLR1. I also have a TLR1S for the Strobe model. And then one of the things I recently tried, this is the first rifle, rifle I've tried this on, is actually running a um, Battle Comp. This is a 2.0 Battle Comp. i got to tell you, uh, this may bring up a big discussion. I normally run a suppressor mount from AAC because I have a suppressor, but this thing, for my, my shooting, has seemed to actually tighten up the groups on my rifle. Um, it does create a little bit of backwash or back pressure towards the shooter this direction. The thing that I love about this comp, it seems to literally take my three prong blackout flash hider. Now, from shooting a certain size group to really tighten the groups down with this. Um, I know that this is a, a muzzle brake, it's not a flash hider. So when I did shoot the night portion of the class, it did have a little bit more flash to it than obviously the blackout would. But for right now, I've been running this and I really do like it a lot. It's uh, It runs really well. Now, on the other side of the rifle, I've got just a standard um, Picatinny section and I did use, I used to use a, a side profile, uh, side mounting light. I have switched my whole thinking on actually using side mounted lights because I like the 12 o'clock mounted light because I can either, if I'm shooting right-handed, I can still trip the light like this or if I had to shoot to my support side, I can actually still trip the light like that as well. So for me, I absolutely love running a 12 o'clock center mounted light like this. From the reason why I still keep this though, is because when I hold the rifle, and I'm actually kind of reaching out, this is a place where I can put my thumb or I can, I can actually feel this automatically that my thumb goes here. The other part of the rifle is I'm, um, because I'm running this Troy rail, I'm actually using, uh, and I think you can buy these through Troy, the Noveski Quick uh, QD Sling Mount, and it actually attaches through here on the under underside. Um, I love it. It's a, it's just a, a great, great uh, type of QD mount. It has a stop to it, and it works really, really well. Um, this is a double star lower, and it's I haven't had any problems with it. It's been a great lower. I've owned Colts, Noveskis, Armalites. I've owned all the different ones. You know, it it works. It works really well. I don't have a problem with it. As far as the sling, this is a Vickers Tactical a VTEC sling, or not, not VTEC, excuse me, the Blue Force Gear uh, Vickers Tactical sling. I've got, right now, I've got um, a sling from Viking Tactics. 
I have this sling. I've got I've had the ones that are padded. I've had the ones that are non-padded. And honestly, I like this one the best. It's non-padded. It's pretty minimalist. It is uh, adjustable where you can actually go in and adjust it. But I really haven't had any problem with this sling. And because of the way I run this around my neck, kind of like almost like a necklace rather than putting my arm through when you're actually engaging and shooting rather than running, I run it like a necklace. So it's just kind of wrapped around your neck and hangs there. If you're actually patrolling, well then yeah, I would sling it over my arm and run it that way. But this is, again, this is kind of my configuration, the way I like to run the rifle. This is a Maya grip hunt with a larger setting. Um, I also have a BCM, uh, I forgot what it's called, this is the larger BCM grip, and I have that on another rifle. But I'm very satisfied with this. I, I like the way it's configured, I like the angle of it. I have the larger back, the back spacer on it. And I always run stocks only on the second position. I like to be my face, not nose to charging handle, but at least really close to it. So I wanted to show you guys uh, my rifle. Um, again, another thing that I've done to it is I painted it. I just don't always like black rifles all the time. I have a few that still are. This is just a simple cryon, I mean cry, Krylon painting job. I went through, washed it down with acetone, the whole rifle really well, hung it up, and then just painted it. The base paint is, is kind of a, a tan or dark earth. Then I hit it with some other colors of some greens and some browns. And that's pretty much it, just the rifle. Uh, the class I took was a 2,000 round class, plus other rounds that, that I've actually fired in the class, I mean, fired with the rifle. And we were shooting out to, with this 4, 4 MOA dot, 400 meters away and hitting our targets uh, very easily. So I think it talks about just uh, how well, even though this is, you know, some people may d disregard a 1-9 twist, I think it um, may show that even with a 1-9 twist and 55 grain stuff, you can hit 18-inch, uh, you know, man-sized targets out to 400 meters. Um, I've been shooting for a long time. I'm not... I'm not a high-speed guy in any in respect of the words, but I really like this rifle, and, and uh, it really is just one of my favorite guns that I own. So I thought I'd show you guys this. I hope you like it. Have a great day.